Hello and welcome. Today we're exploring Trinity Boy Wharf, a really little artistic community which I think is a bit of a hidden gem. It's on the banks of the River Thames in East London and it's home to London's only lighthouse. I'm Katie, a qualified Blue Badge tourist guide, and I specialise in walking tours and virtual tours for Londoners. If you've never heard of Trinity Boy Wharf, here's a bit of background. Right up until the late 18th century, the area of Trinity Boy Wharf was known as Orchard Place. It was green and rural. Development started when the East India and Blackwall docks arrived and this area became really quite industrial. There's evidence of the shipbuilding community that we can see today in the ghost signs, like the Samuda brothers, established by two brothers in 1832, mm -hmm. Joseph and Jacob. From 1843, they leased land here at Orchard Place, but tragedy struck the next year when a ship exploded, killing 10 people, including Jacob Samuda. Another was the Thames Ironworks, who moved here in 1838. Football fans might know that their employees' football team went on to form today's West Ham United in 1900. This industrial heritage is remembered in their nicknames, the Irons and the Hammers. After the docks closed and industry moved out, the wharf was closed in the 1980s. But in 1998, it was bought by the London Docklands Development Corporation. They formed a trust called the Trinity Boy Wharf Trust, which still occupies the land today. But what about this lighthouse? In 1869, Trinity House bought a patch of land here in order to test and repair their equipment and to try out new technology. Now, Trinity House has a fascinating history going back to the 1500s. It received its royal charter from King Henry VIII. You can still see the coat of arms on the Victorian buildings today. And you may also know that just by Tower Hill, you can see the original headquarters of Trinity House, and that can be occasionally visited today. So as a society, they improved navigation around England's coast and they managed all lighthouses in the country. The experimental lighthouse was built in 1860 and originally one of two that were used to train lighthouse keepers and trial new lighting techniques. The other one didn't survive and this was the one where scientist Michael Faraday used to work on improving their efficiency. Today this one here is London's only lighthouse. Now I say this with a bit of a caveat because it's the only real functioning lighthouse but there are some fun examples of design quirks like this building in King's Cross and this church in Walthamstow. And today if you get a chance to go inside you'll find something equally unique and fascinating. Step inside the lighthouse today and you're surrounded by Tibetan singing bowls. These aren't making the sound physically today, but what you can hear is a recording designed by Jem Finer and commissioned by Art Angel. It's called Long Player. The recording of these bowls being played started on the 31st of December 1999, and the idea is that this will continue to play out, ever changing by a computer algorithm for a thousand years. So have a listen now to a little snippet I recorded back in 2016. Isn't that crazy? A thousand years. Anyway, Continuing the artistic theme today, Trinity Boy Wharf is a hub of creative and artistic organisations. There are two container cities which have workspaces for artists and creative businesses. There's even a primary school and it has a school boat that ferries children across to their classes. The largest surviving Victorian building is called the Chain Store and it's home to Parkour Generations, which specialises in parkour and acrobatics. 
And if you're hungry, you can always head to Fat Boy's Diner. This is an original American 1940s diner that was shipped here from New Jersey, coming via Spitterfield's Market and finally arriving here in 2003. As if you needed any more reasons to visit, just look at the epic views out across to North Greenwich, taking in Canary Wharf and the Isle of Dogs. Trinity Boy Wharf started as this isolated creative community in the 1980s, but it's now part of a mammoth new development from Ballymore, split into Good Luck Hope by Trinity Boy Wharf and then City Island, which is close to Canning Town. Ballymore describes City Island as a 12-acre micro-Manhattan. It has close to 1,500 apartments and is home to the London Film School and the English National Ballet. So perhaps it's worth having a wonder now before it changes beyond recognition and perhaps is no longer such a hidden gem. I hope you enjoyed this exploration of Trinity Boy Wharf. I would love to know in the comments if you've been and what did you think. And as ever, if you want to subscribe, you can do so here and join me each week for more of London's hidden history.